Welcome back happy hookers. Today we're going to be learning how to make these beautiful crochet stars. They're so quick and easy to make. You can whip up eight to ten over a couple of evenings and they're a great gift for someone this holiday season. I am using some 100% cotton. I can't remember. I think this is the Drops Muscat brand. It is a DK. As it is a cotton, I do prefer a slightly smaller hook. So rather than a four millimeter, I'm going with a 3.5. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity as well to introduce you to the concept of crochet grids. Now, if you're not familiar with crochet grids, they can look like a lot of different symbols and hieroglyphics. However, I wanted to show you how I actually created this pattern. So for the center, the circle, we'll be using two rounds of half double crochets. We'll crochet a circle of 10 half double crochets and then we'll double each one on the second round so that we've got 20 half double crochets. So that's this section here. For the points, we'll be crocheting a chain, which you can see are these little circular symbols here, a chain of seven, and then we'll be working back into the third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh from the hook. So these last two we'll ignore, they'll curve around to form the point with a single crochet, a half double, two doubles and a treble. Now I'll talk a little bit at the end for those that are interested, an easy way to recognise the single, half double, double and treble. The single's obviously easier because it's always a cross, but these can be a little bit confusing. So let's get started. They do curl up like a little starfish do not fear um i simply lay mine out on a towel spritz them with a little bit of water press them down pop another towel a few heavy books and they'll be perfectly stiff now you can obviously use starch and various things if you want to make them even stiffer or a little bit of mod podge and water and immerse them in but i think they look perfectly fine the fact that i've used cotton does also help them keep their shape because that means that they are quite firm Okay, so I'm going to start, let me just move that book out of the way and hopefully the cats won't uh, interrupt us today. I'm going to start with a magic circle. Now I'll pop a link above if you're not familiar with the magic circle. You can crochet a chain of three and then join to form a loop if you prefer. But I do a wrap over, cross at the front, pick that up and then pick that up again to create my first stitch now i'm only going to chain one here because the half double crochet is a relatively small stitch i'm going to ignore this and then i'm going to place 10 half double crochets into my magic circle so we yarn over insert pull back over for three and then we yarn over and pull through all three stitches on the loop stitches on the hook rather and that's our first half double crochet so we yarn over insert into our magic circle yarn over pull back through for three yarn over pull through all three so that's two i'll take it slow three now you do have to be careful with cotton it can be a little bit more prone to splitting so take your time if it does split simply undo the stitch and start again My neighbour's cutting their grass, so you might hear a little bit of rumbling. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're ignoring that little bit, so we've only got six, so four more. One, two, three, four. Wonderful. Right, so I'm just going to get a little bit more yarn. I'm going to do a quick count up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So I'm going to make quite a big loop there so that I can pull my magic circle nice and tight. Put that to the back. Pick my loop back up and just tidy that up. 
and then just double check by counting back so I know exactly where I'm going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I know I'm going into there with a slip stitch. Now once I've done the slip stitch, you can actually pull your magic circle a little bit tighter. There we go. So I've only got one more round to make. We need to make this 10 into 20 simply by placing two in each stitch. So I like to chain one and then I'll put my first half double crochet into the next stitch. It doesn't really matter where you put it because as long as you've got 20, it's absolutely fine. I'm then going to go back into the next same stitch with a second half double crochet. And then I'm going to move on to the next stitch. So that's yarning over, inserting into the work, pulling back through three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So you're going to carry on placing two half double crochets into each stitch all the way around. And if you need to pause at any point and do a quick count just to make sure that you're on track, that's absolutely fine. I tend to count probably a little bit more excessively because I'm always wanting to make sure I've got exactly the right amount of stitches. The beauty of circular crochet is if you get back to the beginning and you don't have quite enough stitches, you can simply pop another one in. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. Okay, so we're just over halfway, placing two half double crochets in every stitch to bring us back up to 20. So to get myself a little bit more yarn, I'll give anybody that's a little bit behind time to catch up. Okay, last couple of stitches. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick count up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So I definitely need to put another one in there, which was my last double. And then because I only placed one stitch in that first one, I'm going to place one just here. You see, that's a little bit hard to find because it's where we originally came out of in the beginning. And this should take me back to my 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here, you can see, it's where I'm placing my final stitch. I'm ignoring all of that. I'm going to put my slip stitch in there. And there have my 20. Okay, so let's get on to the fun part. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sipping my juice. Okay, let's get on to the juice. I know, no tea today. I'm gonna have a cup of tea after this. Chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we always ignore the first chain. We're going to ignore the second chain and we're going to go into this third chain here. I like to just go into the back loop where you've got the little V. I always just pick up the back one. It's personal preference. Some people like to pick up two. Some people like to turn it over and pick up the one in the centre on the back. Out of habit, I've always just gone into the back. So we're going to place a single crochet. So that's into the work yarn over two on the hook yarn over pull through both and you can see where we've been because there's a quite a large hole there the next stitch is a half double which we've been doing so we yarn over insert into the work yarn over pull through three loops on the hook yarn over pull through all three the next two double crochets so yarn over the same insert into the chain yarn over pull through three chains on three loops on the hook this time we're only going to yarn over and pull through the first two and we're going to yarn over and pull through the second two 
So that's our double crochet. We're going to place another double crochet in the next one. So yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Now the last stitch here is a treble crochet or a triple crochet. However, it has a little twist because it's quite a tall stitch if you think it's going to be a little bit taller than that final one. And then when we've completed it, we're going to join it back up to the work. However, you can see already there's quite a big gap here. Imagine even a bigger stitch when we join it. There's going to be quite a big gap here. Now, it's not going to be a massive issue, but what I like to do is create a slip stitch halfway through the stitch that anchors it into position so that it's not only anchored at the beginning, the middle, and also the end. So if you already know how to treble crochet, that's great, but see how you get on with this slight modification. So for a treble crochet, we yarn over twice before we go into the work. We're then going to go into that final chain and yarn over and pull through. This leaves us four stitches. Now we yarn over and we pull through two. Now to close the stitch traditionally we would have yarn over through two, yarn over through two, but it's here that I like to add the addition of the join. So skipping the next stitch and going into the one after, we're going to insert into the work and just pull through. It is going to give us an additional loop and a hook, but don't worry. We're going to yarn over and pull through that new one and then through the two we would have normally on our way to closing the stitch. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through the final two. We're then going to skip the next stitch and in the following stitch, you're going to place your slip stitch. And there we go, we've attached it and it's also got not much of a gap. Now there's still a gap between double crochet and the treble but there isn't a large gap where it's joined. And then you're simply going to repeat that process four more times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Third chain from the hook is our single crochet. Next is our half double. So we're yarning over first into the work, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, followed by two doubles. So exactly the same as before, but we pull through two and then we pull through two more. And then we yarn over for our last double, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then the final stitch is our modified treble. So we yarn over twice, insert into that final chain. Oh, I just need a little bit more yarn. There we go. Yarn over through the first two, skip a stitch, find the next stitch, insert your hook and pull through one, yarn over and pull through both that new loop and the next two on the hook and then finally complete the stitch, skip a stitch and then into the next stitch we simply do a slip stitch. So that's just pulling it straight through the work. I like to twizzle it like that. And we have two points on the star. So what, let's try that again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochet in the third one. After you've done a couple, you'll know this pattern off by heart. Half double crochet into the next one, double crochet into the following two chains, another double, and then our modified treble. So into the four loops on the hook, pull through two, skip a stitch, find the next stitch, insert and pull through a loop, yarn over and pull through that loop and the following two on the chain, and then yarn over, 
the final two to close, skip a stitch, find the next stitch and we'll slip stitch to join our third point into our star. Okay, two more to go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm definitely going to need some more yarn pulling off. I do like this drops muscat, but it doesn't pull from the middle of the ball. And if you've used, you know, sheepy soft fun, you know that when it comes from the middle of the ball, it makes life a lot easier. Okay, third chain along, single crochet half double crochet in the next one double crochet in the next one double crochet in the following one. Oh, i do apologize i've got a lot of beeping happening and then a treble crochet modified so through two skip find the next one pull up a loop Yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over, complete the stitch, skip, and then find the place to slip stitch. So one last one to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Single crochet into the third half double crochet into the next, double crochet into the third one, double crochet into the second to last one and then the final modified treble crochet we yarn over twice, we insert into that final chain, four loops on the hook, we yarn over, we pull through the first two we skip a stitch and we go into the following stitch, pulling up a loop. We yarn over and pull through those three. And then we do the final yarn over through the final two, skip a stitch and we slip stitch into the final place. And there we have our crochet star. It will curl, do not worry. It will curl. And there you have it. Lots and lots of stars. Now, once they're all sprayed and flattened, I took, which I think I've got in my drawer here, just a very plain roll of, um, you know, rustic looking twine. And I took a large darning needle and I just went in one side of the point there and out on side of the point, probably there like that, and just threaded them all along. The beautiful thing about this twine is it kind of, because of the roughness, it kind of holds the stars in place. They don't tend to, you know, move up and down easily. So once you've threaded them, you can position them and they will stay quite nicely. Now you could, if you wanted to, have a go at stitching them together and maybe padding out the middle a little bit. I'm not sure the points are big enough to provide a lot of padding, um, so I don't know how well that would work. Um, but there you have it. Please do tag me in your garland videos over on Instagram at crocheting tea. I would love to see what you create with this. Happy hooking and I'll see you soon. Bye.